hi everyone so in today's video i'll be working on the outside i can't wait it feels like spring is in the air it's just a bit chilly this morning but the sun's out the birds are singing and it's supposed to warm up into the mid 60s today i can't wait i'll be doing some cleanup along with a few other projects that i take you with me as i do this thanks to sunday for sponsoring today's video more on that later pebbles is inside the window watching me so cute so the first area I'm gonna be working on is here by the bird feeder. And I basically just wanna clean things up, you know, pull weeds. And my bird bath is always tipped over. We have raccoons during the night and they always invade this area with all the bird seeds. And there's a brown tree that needs to be removed. Uh, this was our Christmas tree. I had put it here for cover for the birds this winter. And it wasn't this color most of the time. It was actually a nice green, but that'll have to go. And I'm also going to be fluffing up some of the leaves. I like to leave some of them for a mulch and I kind of like to fluff them up sometimes in the spring and kind of work them into the soil. As I'm working in these different spaces, I'm going to add some clips of what it looked like last, you know, early spring into summer in this area. Uh, just to kind of hype us up for the upcoming spring season. I get this way during this time of the year. Like I can't wait to just see all of the different greens and everything kind of bursting forth. I feel like the whole earth, you know, smells of green. So hopefully in a few months, it'll look like this. I can't wait. So of course to complete my life during the early spring season, I have to get this pond running. Of course there's a little bit of maintenance involved in having a pond like this. I don't stress about it. In fact, I kind of embrace the nature part of having a pond. That means it's not the cleanest pond around, but I love that it can host some little frogs and I just love the sound of the water, of course. Every spring I try to remove most of the leaves and I plan to again use my pump to pump out all of the water that I can and then put some fresh water in. There's still gonna be some muck in the bottom and I try to think other things when I reach in here and remove these leaves and it doesn't really smell the greatest, but I just try to remember how I like the sound of it and how it is a home to my little frogs. I'll try to find a pump similar to this one and link it down below in the description box because I get a lot of questions about it. 
But this pump has lasted for years. In fact, I sometimes wish it would give out because I'd want to invest in a smaller one. I feel it's just a little bit more power than I really need in here. Um, I like to have my water running, kind of dropping off of the stone, not shooting out from it. And I have an issue with that. I actually have to put rocks kind of in front of my stream of water just to get it to slow down a bit. So I think a smaller pump would work better, but as long as this one keeps going, I'll probably keep it. I'm gonna jump in here and mention a few things. I probably shouldn't even make an appearance like this. I feel like I'm all windblown and I have dirt on my clothes, but I'm having the time of my life out there. I told John I haven't had this much fun in a while. I love days like this, those first spring-like days, just going outside, getting my hands in the dirt. It's just so much fun. I wanna talk a bit about the sponsor of today's video, Sunday. They are a subscription-based lawn care service. I've talked about them before on here, but we've been using their products for the past two years in our little backyard, and we could not be happier with how that yard is looking. It's so nice and lush and green. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up a lawn care plan. Basically, you just go onto their website and you type in your address and they actually find you through Google Maps. They can actually see how big your yard is and that way they know how much product to send. First, they're gonna send you a little bag and a scoop on the mail that you actually take a soil sample of your yard. And that's another really nice thing. You're not gonna be applying products into your yard that you don't really need. Like they're gonna test your soil and see what it's lacking or what it needs more of. I still get excited when I receive a Sunday package in the mail. Um, it's just so much fun to unbox, see what they have in there. And it's always so easy to understand. Like they have a paper that tells you exactly, you know, when you should apply your product and any other details that you might have to know. I love the idea that they keep track of when you need your products and they just arrive in the mail and then you know it's about time to apply them. And it's really easy to apply the products. It doesn't take long. Basically, you just fasten your bag at the end of a hose, you know, turn the water on, uh, turn the nozzle, you know, open it and just spray your lawn. And I always have little things that I go by to see how much product I have left in my bag. Like I note where my level of the liquid is. And then I try to kind of guess if I'm, you know, halfway through spraying the lawn, I know that I should be at a certain level. And I don't think it really matters if you get more product on a certain area of your lawn than another. Um, it all just turns really nice and green. I even thought today as I was applying it, I felt like the lawn was turning green before my eyes. Here in Ohio, we're still kind of in the winter lawn phase, so it's not lush and green like it's going to be in another, you know, month or even a couple weeks but it's still looking really good. I'm impressed with how thick and healthy it is. One of my favorite things about these products is the fact that you can actually pronounce the names of the ingredients that are in them. I love that I'm applying a non-toxic treatment onto my backyard. You guys know how I love my little critters back there, you know, the tree frogs and the birds and the spring peepers, and I love that I'm applying something that's not gonna harm them. I know they use ingredients like iron and seaweed and molasses, Again, you know, non-mystery words. I really like that. I do have a promo code for you today in case you decide to sign up for a subscription. Just go to GetSunday.com slash White Cottage Co. Again, that's GetSunday.com slash White Cottage Co. And enter COTTAGE20, all caps, to get 20% off. So now let's get back to work. And I do want to mention at the end of this video, I'm going to share a few little bloopers or mess ups that I had last summer in our backyard. I think I can talk about it now, but I was pretty horrified at the time. I might have shared one on Instagram but I, I don't think I ever shared it in a video so stay tuned for that
here in the front of the house. I want to get rid of these Japanese maple leaves. I'm never really fond of this color this time of the year. I'm going to get rid of those and then just, you know, pull some weeds, kind of straighten things up. And the landscaping to the left of the sidewalk, I had redone last summer. You might remember seeing that. I gotta say, I really love this look. I recently told John, I think I smile every time I walk past here. Even during the winter, it just something with evergreens, they always look good and they're so maintenance free. So really in this bed, it's just pulling a few weeds and I do have some forget-me-nots coming up. I used to have more of a rock garden look or lower growing plants in here and forget-me-nots really took over. I'll try to see if I can find a picture of of what it looked like. It was always pretty at the time, but gotta say I'm still liking this look better for this space. The pond in front of the house is the overflow from our main spring here on our property and growing up this was all we had for our house like we didn't use anything else but a couple of years ago we ended up getting some city water for some of our water in the house we still use some of this but it wasn't the best to drink anymore like it wasn't the safest so we ended up getting city water and I guess with time springs can go bad and it's often due to people you know putting bad stuff on their fields and you get that runoff water and then it contaminates your springs which is too bad because this was always a really good spring. I miss that spring water. There's something about the taste of that but I'm glad we can at least enjoy it having this little pond here and of course the frogs love it too. John put these beautiful steps and terraces in here. I love the look of natural stone like this. I just think you can't go wrong with using that, especially on a property like this where, you know, where we basically live on rocks. Like we might as well put them to use. Like every rock around here that we use for, you know, landscaping purposes was from this property. Like we found it in the woods or dug it out of the ground. There's pros and cons to that, of course, but overall I just, yeah, I like to embrace it. I like to see it. Now let's talk about lavender. This is definitely one of my favorite plants. And I feel a little bit, I don't wanna say smug or prideful, but I can't believe I can actually raise lavender. Lavender is kinda of hard to raise here in our area. But so far, knock on wood as I say this, my lavender plants have survived in these terraces. I've had them at other places that they haven't survived, so I'm not sure are they liking maybe the well-drained soil, uh, just the location, something about it so far. Again, I'm not putting my hopes up too much, but I think they look pretty good this year again. I can always tell come springtime, you know, if they're gonna survive or not. Lavender does get new sprigs on old growth, so you don't wanna just trim them down all the way. I'm just kind of tidying them up a bit. And as I'm doing this, I see some new growth. Now the one plant, I don't really see anything, so I'm not sure. I'm not going to give up. It might still be alive, but I'll throw a picture on here of what it looked like last summer and you just smelled it every time you walk past. I'd often just pluck a flower off and kind of rub it onto my wrists and just so I smelled it all day. The last area I'll be working in is the herb garden and I had put up this pretty wrought iron fence last summer, had made a video on it in case you wanna check it out, but I love the structure of it. It really adds character to the space. And I did plant some lavender along the front. And again, a few of these plants look a little iffy, but I see some growth on a few of them. I have a goal of really focusing on planting more herbs and just really taking care of my herbs this summer and actually you know, getting something done with them besides just you know, running out here and clipping a few things as I'm cooking. I'd really like to dry some of them so I actually have them you know, during the winter. But of course, sometimes I set goals and don't get it done, but my intentions are to do that. 
since this video is all about spring, I'll show you another project that we worked on recently. John dug out some scrap wood and is planning to make a hotbed or a cold frame for me. Never sure which name to refer to, but it's one of those little structures that you set in a garden and you can start your seeds like really early in the season, you know, get some greens growing before the actual, you know, gardening season starts. Like the sun will heat the little box almost like a mini greenhouse. whiteboard that John is using for the front used to be that shelf hanging above the dining room window. You guys might remember seeing me remove that when I added the wallpaper, but it is a good feeling, you know, sometimes just hanging on to these things, even if at the time you think you might never use it. Uh, sometimes it's that perfect piece of wood that you need for the next project. So I'm glad we hung on to it. I guess it'll get a new life in the garden. We plan to use this old window for the lid. And as you can see, this window used to hang on the wall. We had some pictures in here. I told him I really wanna hang on to these pictures. Can't believe how fast time goes by. Um, people just look so young in here. And even Twinkle looks different. We planted a cover crop in the garden last fall, so most of what you see in here is that. There's also some weeds, of course, but I'm gonna overturn some of the soil here in the one corner where I wanna put the hotbed. I think adding a bit of compost to my hotbed will be good for it. So that's what I'm doing here is loading that up.
I'm going to use some seeds left over from last year. They were stored in a cool, dry place. I think they should be okay, hopefully. But I'm planting three different kinds of lettuce and radishes. The lettuce varieties are Black Seeded Simpson, Ithaca, and Butter Crunch. And the radishes are Pink Beauties. We drilled small holes into the window frame to hold these dowels in place. And then we put a screw at the end of the dowels with a screw with a small head so that it would fit into the hole, you know, keep everything in place. Since I'm down here anyway, I'm going to clean up this area where I planted some Veronica last summer. And this Veronica was some that Marlene and I had started in her greenhouse, which I say started. It wasn't from seed, but we had bought little plugs and replanted them. It was so much fun. We did that in February. That way we kind of got a plant fix, you know, during the winter. And at the time, I wasn't really sure where I'd actually put them. So I just put a row in the garden. And I was really glad I did because they bloomed late, like late summer. I mean, it was so nice because I saw it really attracted, you know, butterflies and bees. It seemed they didn't have any other place to go. So this was one thing that was still blooming for them. Plus, they looked really pretty. So I'm excited to see what they'll do this year. I also plan to add my remaining compost out around them. I had debated what all I want to put into this video as far as things that I'm doing around here. I'm so spring-minded right now, and I have lots of, you know, outdoor spring projects going on. Probably could have made two videos instead of one here, but then I thought if you're like me, you probably don't mind all these extra little things that I'm doing around here. Hopefully it's inspiring and motivating to you. But I did end up just cleaning up the yard. You know, I picked up sticks and I straightened up the fire pit area. And I have a tall grass growing beside the fire pit that I put on fire. That's usually what I do to get rid of the dry grass. And don't worry, I did keep an eye on it and I watered it down as soon as it was burned just so it wouldn't creep into the woods for me. But it's such an easy way to get rid of dry, dead grass. I also planted out my geraniums that I had stored over winter. You might remember last fall I dug them out, put them in brown paper bags, and stored them in our basement. So now I'm potting them up. I'm not sure are they alive or not. I did see a few new shoots out of a couple of the plants, but not all of them. So we'll see. We can always shift them around if, you know, if a couple of them might be living and the rest aren't. I'll just, you know, put everything in one pot then. But for now, I'm going to try it. And I'll probably move them inside as we get colder temperatures and then maybe outside as things warm up. But I really hope they're alive. They were so pretty last year. And of course, plants like this are kind of pricey. So I thought I'd really be saving a lot of money if I can get them to survive for me. So I'll go ahead and show you a few things that are blooming right now. Love these hellebores. These are behind the water feature in the backyard. Then I have some daffodils and white hellebores blooming in the front of the house. I can't wait to see blooms from these tulips. My mom had given me these. I think they're going to be white and yellow mixed together. As I was working outside these beautiful days, I had a few firsts of the season. I always look forward to these so much, but didn't get a video of it, but I did see a little frog jump into the backyard pond. And then I also heard the Eastern Phoebe. And for those of you, you know, from the area, you know that once you hear the sound of the Phoebe, spring is right around the corner. Now for my backyard bloopers, first I want to say this was all user error. There was nothing wrong with the product, it was just me not reading the directions. First I accidentally used a weed killer in my prized backyard that wasn't intended for grass. And you can imagine my dismay the next day when I saw all of these lines in the backyard. Like I had just spot treated the different weeds that I saw. There weren't even a lot, but I thought, well I have the product, might as well use it and it looked like somebody tried to write something in the backyard. And even this video is maybe a week later, it's not as prominent in this video as it actually was. I did read the directions after the effect and I did see that it said to only use this weed killer along you know, borders or driveways. It wasn't intended for grass. It took some time, but the grass did grow back in, thankfully, so definitely a healthy lawn. The second blooper involved my pond, and I had shared this on Instagram, so some of you probably saw it on there, but I was cleaning my pond one evening, and I thought, I'm going to add some pond dye to this water, because uh, I know that's good at, you know, blocking the 
the sun's rays because that is often what causes algae. So I thought I'd just add just a small amount. And of course I added too much. I guess it just does not take a lot. Once I added the dye, of course this would take a little bit until it would circulate through the pond. So I went back to work and cleaning my flower beds. And the next time I turned around, it looked like this. Needless to say, I was shocked. I mean, Kool-Aid was the thing that came to mind first. Thankfully, I was able to drain some of the water out and add fresh water to dilute it somewhat. And with time, you know, I'd fade it too, but definitely won't happen again if I can help it. I hope this video got you excited for the spring season. Thanks for watching. And again, make sure to check out Sunday products. Go to GetSunday.com slash WhiteCottageCo. And if you do decide to sign up for a subscription, make sure to use promo code COTTAGE20 to get 20% off. As always, I hope your day is going great, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.